Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for stopping by. Welcome back if you're already a subscriber and welcome if you're new. Today is a bit of a like unscripted, impromptu video. I was actually thinking about this today when I was doing my makeup and I was like, you know what, I actually really want to uh, release a video talking about my makeup addiction. Like I put that in italics or in quotation marks because obviously it wasn't diagnosed. Uh, it is a self-diagnosed situation, but I know for a fact the consumerism that I was going through was addictive behavior. Um, and the way that it was mentally making me feel, like I do have an undergraduate in psychology, it was addictive behavior. So I thought today that I would release this video because I know that there are other people out there that feel the same way or went through this as well. I feel like this was particularly prevalent uh, between 2016 to 2020. Uh, I feel like there's been a real shift uh, the past two years since the pandemic hit, but this is my story, completely unscripted. I'm just going to kind of make a 10 minute video telling you about where I've come from, the steps that I put in place to uh, fix, fix my issues and where I am today and the result of actually rectifying that behavior. So before we jump into the video, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. I upload every Saturday at 6 a.m. Melbourne time and I do stuff on uh, makeup, beauty, uh, a little bit of vlogging every now and then. I'm going to be getting into fitness and also talking about career advice because I am a recruiter by trade or trade profession um, and I would love to bring some of that information to you. So do not forget to subscribe and push that post notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads because sometimes I throw one in on a Tuesday as well and you don't want to miss that. So I'll stop babbling and let's get straight into the video. Okay, so <laughs> this is a bit of an embarrassing topic for me because the person that I am now is not the same person I was when I first discovered makeup, who was not the same person that I was pre-pandemic when I was studying to be a professional makeup artist, which is my side hustle. That's what I do is makeup artistry and YouTube. Um, if you need a makeup artist in Victoria, hook me up. My email should be in the description box below. Shameless plug. Um, but yeah, I was studying to be a uh, professional makeup artist at the beginning of 2019, I think it was. Like, oh, when did the pandemic hit? Was it 2019 or 2020? I think it was 2020. It's, it's all, honestly, it's so embarrassing. It's just a blur to me now. But literally, yeah, it was 2020. Um, 2020 was the year that I was starting to be makeup artist. I don't know if I necessarily did it because I loved the artistry. I just loved makeup. I was really into YouTube. I I was probably buying around $200 to $300 worth of makeup weekly. I, I look at that now and I think, how in the world did I afford that off my tiny little wage that I used to earn in university and also post-university. My I mean full disclosure, my first job I had out of university I was earning fifty five thousand package. So minus your ten percent off that for your super and that's in Australian dollars. So like if you if you're converting that to the US dollars it's like take take about a third off that and then you probably get what that is. But for for living costs and stuff like that in Melbourne that is quite a low wage in terms of trying to survive. Um, and somehow I was managing to spend, like I said, 250 to $300 a week on makeup. And that therefore meant that I, for, I had to forego a lot of other things. So I didn't get to do as much travel as I wanted to um, and stuff like that. But I do think that there is a direct relation between my convulsive or com Compulsive, convulsive, compulsive, <laughs> convulsive. My compulsive makeup buying and a sense of belonging to a community and the fact that I found makeup in 2013. I found the YouTuber Lauren Curtis in 2013. So if you don't know me, um, in 2013, I, I actually joined the Australian Army. That was my, that was a career choice I wanted to pursue. I was very much joining for the purpose of helping others, but it just didn't quite work out. Um, I mean, that could be another story altogether if you are interested in hearing that. But um, I actually, at, at, a, at a time where it was quite dark for me and I felt really lost and, and confused, I, um, I found Lauren Curtis on YouTube. And that was when I started going down that rabbit hole and I found Jacqueline Hill and Nicole Concilio and um, 
like everybody else under the sun. Manny Amy Way, Jeffrey. I don't think Jeffrey Star was big back then. But like I found everybody, like that whole beauty community, I, I found that within a year and the following year I joined um, RMIT University in Melbourne. Um, that was a really great experience studying a Bachelor of Social Science. So psychology is my undergraduate and then my postgraduates in human resources. And <sighs> look, fitness has always been a massive part of part of me. If you see me moving, it's because my little dog my little dog just really wants to sit on my lap, so I'm going to let him sit on my lap whilst I talk. So if I'm covered in dog hair, I'm so sorry. Um, so when I joined RMIT in 2014, yeah, 2014, I um, kind of went down that rabbit hole. When, when I wasn't really into my fitness and I gained a lot of weight, I have a tendency to have the scales go up and down, up and down, depending on... My, my circumstances, I, it's totally natural. It's just that I don't have like a five kilo swing. I have like a 10 kilo swing. Uh, a good example of that is right now, I'm probably 10 kilos up uh, due to the pandemic and the fact that I just have not gotten back into the swing of things and motivation. I'm gonna do another video on that hopefully in the next couple of weeks about the lack of motivation following the pandemic or well, it's, still, it's still there, but like the full brunt of the pandemic and the fact that it is okay to feel that way, but um, every single time I would lose a lot of motivation and stuff like that, I would uh, tend to use makeup as like a crutch because it didn't matter what size you were. It didn't matter anything like that in terms of it being too tight or being too loose or anything like that. It didn't matter because makeup was always going to fit on your face. Mascara was always going to go on your eyelashes. You were always going to be able to do something, like lipstick, like anything. And I, I know that there's obviously back then, and even still now, there are discrimina discriminative factors where certain people don't actually get to be a part of this community because of certain things like skin colour um, and, and other things like that, which is a whole other topic yet again. But um, that was when it started for me, 20, 2014, and that's when I went down that rabbit hole. and. It, it took a pandemic to make it stop. So if you have been on my channel for a long time, you'll know that in in 2020, I did a lot of videos. Hey, <laughs> hey, are you coming to say hello? This is my little sausage dog, guys. If you're if you're new to my channel, this is little Dusty, little Dusty. <laughs> okay, hop down now, puppy. He can hit sit on my lap. He can sit on my lap. Good boy. Um, <laughs> so. In 2020, I did a lot of uh, no buy videos, project pans, uh, things I no longer purchase, and that was because I had a real fear around losing my job. So I am a recruiter. A lot of recruiters in Melbourne and across the world lost their jobs like that overnight because, I mean, when a lot of businesses freak out and uh, they're going into protective mode and they want to make sure that the business survives, what's the first thing that goes? Recruitment so you don't need a recruiter anymore. So a lot of businesses were making a lot of their staff redundant and they were just like chopping From all different angles and at the time my wage was the main wage of my my household um, I don't have children. I didn't even have this one at that time um, But I was earning a very very nice wage with a really really nice business <laughs> He just wants cuddles guys, so I'm gonna hold him so um, I was living quite comfortably and I actually really genuinely liked my job. I had a really great boss, the business had really, really great ethics and I, I wanted to be, I wanted to be with them long term. And my fear was that I had finally found a job that I loved that I was going to lose because of factors that I couldn't control. So it was from that point that I went, right, what goes first? And it was makeup. And it sucked because for me, makeup was like a safe space and it continued to be during the pandemic. I, I was doing YouTube videos, but I did learn pretty quickly that I didn't actually need to continuously purchase more and more and more makeup to make content. Like, do you get what I mean? And I went from not having, well, it's not that I didn't have job security. It was that I was scared that I was going to lose my job. And I was lucky enough to be part of a, um, a central service that would never ever not exist. Like I was in the postal network and e-commerce went through the roof. I was never going to lose my job. That, that business made so much money. It was probably the safest business 
out of everything last year and the year before. So um, I was super, super lucky with all of that. But in saying that, I wasn't wearing makeup every single day anymore. I didn't need to have 10 to 15 different options of foundation or to try a new foundation or I, I wasn't doing my makeup artistry on the weekends because weddings were getting cancelled. Everything was kind of changing. So I stopped buying makeup and it was at that point I realized just how much makeup I had in my collection that I and even my clients may potentially not even get through in the period of time that I had to use it for expired. And then when I looked at it from a dollar value, and it hurt because I, I didn't own a house at that time. Uh, it was my dream to buy a house and I didn't realize that my major hindrance was my addiction to makeup. Like I felt like I had to buy something from Mecca and Sephora every single week. Like getting an eyeshadow palette once a month or whatever wasn't it just wasn't it. It wasn't enough. I had when I would go to Sephora or something like that, I would need to get multiple things, um, and they had to be on trend things, and they had to be the latest and greatest. I mean, if I looked at the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette now, you'd look at that and go, like, "Why? Like that's so outdated. Like there's so many better things out there now." Whereas that palette still works. You can still achieve beautiful looks out of that palette, but it's just it's all that trends. And look, I bought into those trends. I was in it, I was around it, I was all about it, I loved it, I felt like I was a part of the community that other people didn't understand and it was great, but when you are worried that you're going to lose your job, you've got to make some serious choices and sometimes makeup's just got to go. So what I did, um, and I recommend you do it too, is to do a budget and try and save as much money as possible and set aside a certain amount of money each month if you do feel like you can't go cold turkey because that's what I, I haven't purchased anything since my wedding last year which was March and I only purchased those items because they were my favorite and I knew that I wanted to wear them on the day and I'd run out so it's nearly been a year it's March next month I um I don't know when this video is going live but it's nearly been a whole year since I purchased any makeup and my collection is still four drawers deep like, like, it's ridiculous. My goal to myself, and I suggest you set a goal as well, is that if I can condense all of my makeup into one case, into one makeup case, I'm going to buy myself the Louis Vuitton, I think it's like the, the Nice or the something like that. It's basically the vanity case. And it's the bigger one. And it's expensive. It's a couple of thousand dollars. But that's going to be my reward for getting through all my makeup but it's also going to be my limit. I'm only ever going to be able to put makeup into that case and then that's it. There's no more. Nothing else fits. It's not. I'm not going to do drawers. I'm not going to do this whole setup anymore. Once I'm done with my makeup, all of this is going to get sold and I'm condensing because there is so much more to life than just makeup. Like <laughs> Makeup is only skin deep and I, I hope you know that and Makeup's not going to pay the bills. Obviously, if it's your job, it's going to. But like, if you're per if you're constantly purchasing makeup over and over again, it's not an investment. It's not making you money. And there's a reason why the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poorer. It's because of the investment choices that we make. And buying makeup, unless obviously you're making YouTube videos and and you're doing reviews and or TikToks or or whatever or Instagram or whatever, you're not going to be making any money off it or if it's sponsored or whatever. So think about it like that. Like I'm I'm 28 now. And I'm only just getting into investing. If you want to know more about how I'm investing, I use the app Raise. If you're in Australia, I would strongly suggest getting this app. It's a micro investing app, so you can just kind of dabble in it, see how you go. Um, I will have my code for, um, it's, it's not an affiliate link or anything, but you do get $5 if you sign up using my code versus having like $0. I use that to pay, well, I did use that to pay um, my first two months, because it is $2.50 a month like administration fee, I use that to pay for my first two months, which was absolutely beautiful. So my code will be down below if you want to use that. But think about that money making you more money. Um, this, this is not going to make you money. It's going to run out and it is a luxury. <laughs> this is going to sound horrible, absolutely horrible, but when you leave this world, you're going to leave it exactly the same way you entered it with nothing. So you can have like all of this makeup and, and whatever 
but when you leave this world it's not it's it's not coming with you everybody leaves this earth equal and we actually leave without a skin color without a gender without any of we leave as a soul this doesn't define your soul so i don't know when you think of it like that like don't be wrong it's a play thing but don't let it jeopardize your financial situation i am much happier for it now when i pick my makeup up it's not um, it, it was never a chore like that's not the word I'm looking for but it doesn't have any kind of burden associated with it that makes me feel like I need to be buying more or I need to declutter I, I actually hate I hate the concept of decluttering and I'm going to do another video on that and there already is a video on my channel about decluttering being a concept to make us buy more makeup or buy more things so I am on a like a, a minimalism journey like I'm trying to have less things and getting over my makeup addiction, which was through doing budgets, through aiming to buy a house, which I have done. I have purchased a house and that has changed the dynamics of my budget quite substantially, which that again could be a really great video for people who are looking to purchase a house in Australia and what that actually involves. Because a good example is my brother's going to be purchasing a house this year and I don't think he quite understands that yeah, you put the deposit down, but then you've got your rates, you've got different bills associated with a house, your stamp duty, you've got a lot of stuff. You've actually got to buy furniture. Like if you're a first home, you gotta, yeah, anyway, I'm getting off topic. So if you are struggling with makeup addiction and the thrill of purchasing more makeup, I really do advise that you take a step back and think about like long-term goals. When you're 21, 22, you don't think long term, but I look back to when I was 21, 22, 23, 24, even 25, and I didn't stop until I was 26. I started buying like buying a lot when I was about 20, 21 to 24, I'd say, is when I was purchasing a hell of a lot. I didn't slow down until the pandemic hit, and I was 20, I was 26 when the pandemic hit, just turned 26. And I'm now 28, like literally last month, turned 28. And now I've slowed down and now I'm investing and now I'm looking at the future. I haven't missed the goal, but it's never too late to rectify these behaviors. But man, four years of spending money like that, I don't want to know. I don't want to know the kind of money I could have been making if I invested that. Like clothes and makeup and shoes and, oh, it just, it, it, oh. Again, another another topic. So I hope you guys like this video. Look, I honestly was just rambling, unscripted. This is just completely my thoughts talking about my makeup addiction and what I've done to get over it, the, the basically the context of it all. If you do have any questions or queries, I am happy to make this a bit of a series on my channel. I love talking about this sort of stuff, talking about real topics to you guys. Um, and I do think this is a really important one, especially for the generation that is moving away from that hyper consumerism especially now um and looking towards that minimalist kind of lifestyle or the needs kind of lifestyle versus the wants so i hope you guys again really like this video and do decide to stay around um and subscribe to my channel i upload every single saturday 6 a.m melbourne time and sometimes i throw in one on a tuesday as well i'm gonna try and start doing that but i'm also not gonna put pressure on myself so i hope you do decide to stick around and i hope you have a lovely day i'll chuck some more videos at the end of this one if you want to keep watching my content that would be awesome give it a thumbs up and i will see you guys in my next video thanks guys bye